Welcome to this episode of Monday Morning Joe. I'm Joyce O'Shaughnessy. So Monday Morning Joe is a quick-hitting, coffee-talk style, four-episode series that will cover what you need to know about antibody drug conjugates, or ADCs, for the treatment of the historically difficult-to-treat triple-negative breast cancer or metastatic HR positive HER2 negative breast cancer that has become endocrine therapy uh, resistant. Please remember to subscribe to the Exchange CME YouTube channel and make sure notifications are on so you can be prompted when new episodes are released. Today, we're going to discuss the most recent data from ESMO 2024 regarding ADCs and how they treat metastatic breast cancer. We saw a really important clinical trial, um, the results of which from ESMO 2024 called Destiny Breast 12. This was a phase 3B, a four um, large uh, trial treating patients with TDXD who have brain metastasis. This is HER2 positive patients. They could have stable treated brain mets. They could have active untreated brain mets as long as they were not symptomatic. This was a large cohort of patients that were 263 patients. They also treated 241 patients who did not have brain metastasis. This was a highly positive trial with the 12-month PFS of 61%. In those with brain metastasis, the median PFS had not yet been reached. It is amazingly effective, and the waterfall plot shows that almost Every patient with HER2 positive uh, brain metastasis responded to the TDXD, including those patients with actively growing untreated brain metastasis, highly, highly effective um, agent. Very, very exciting uh, results. There was ILD seen with the uh, TDXD in this patient population. 16% of patients had ILD, and unfortunately, there were four deaths from ILD in this trial. Also at ESMO 2024, we saw a benefit risk analysis of sasituzumab in patients with metastatic TMBC. So the Q-twist analysis was used to compare all of the efficacy endpoints with SG, including quality of life, uh, as well as the risks associated with um, sasituzumab, govotecan, compared to chemotherapy of physician's choice. And the SG demonstrated statistically significant and clinically meaningful improvement in the Q-twist parameters compared to chemotherapy in patients with previously treated TMBC. So the benefit-risk analysis was clearly and significantly in favor of SG compared with standard chemotherapy. And the net benefits of SG continued to accrue the longer patients were treated with the SG. We also saw at ESMO 20. 24, that indeed the antibody drug conjugates, particularly TD, TDXD, that are associated with ILD, the risk for ILD is higher in, than patients receiving targeted agents along with their endocrine therapy, tyrosine kinase inhibitors, PARP inhibitors, and Evrolimus. So we have to be especially aware of ILD with a TDXD. And so we really need to do some prophylactic monitoring, surveillance for ILD in our asymptomatic patients with non-contrast chest CT scans every um, 8 to 12 weeks. And we especially want to be careful with TDXD in our patients coming in with um, pulmonary risk factors, uh, older uh, age, and of course, any history of ILD. It is uh, strictly contraindicated to treat the patients with TDXD. We also saw updated data at ESMO 2024 regarding this important question in practice is can we rechallenge with TDXD after patients have had grade one ILD and it has resolved? So the rate of TDXD um, in these rechallenged uh, trials was 16% uh, percent in the analysis, 16% all grade and 1% fatal grade five. Most of the cases were grade one. They were treated with steroids. And the grade one patients were the only patients who were rechallenged after improvement uh, or resolution of the ILD on CT scan. Remember, grade one patients are asymptomatic. So after rechallenge, 
with TDXD, either at the same dose or a lower dose, patients were on TDXD for a median of 100 days. Only 4 of 14 patients who were rechallenged had recurrent ILD. All were grade 1 or 2, and two patients went on to be rechallenged a second time. So these data do show us that it is possible to rechallenge patients who have grade 1 asymptomatic ILD that resolves with steroid therapy or with a time With TDXD, I personally think because the ILD is dose-dependent, I think it's prudent to give the patients a reduced dose of TDXD if we're going to re-challenge them. But of course, it's only asymptomatic patients, which is why, of course, we want to get the serial uh, surveillance CT scans of the chest so we can pick up ILD if it's going to occur while it's asymptomatic, treat it, and be able to uh, re-challenge the patient at a lower dose. So the take-home points are that Of course, the ADCs have really revolutionized the treatment of our patients with metastatic breast cancer, especially triple negative disease and endocrine therapy resistant HR positive HER2 negative breast cancer. And it's an explosive area of growth um, in our breast cancer world. In addition to these new therapies, there are advances in biomarker and classification of metastatic breast cancer. Now we have HER2 low and we have ultra low which may help guide our treatment selections. And our understanding of these agents and more to come is rapidly evolving, and we will be seeing the introduction of new ADCs into our practice in the near future. Thank you for joining me today. As discussed earlier, please check back for new episodes on the Exchange CME YouTube page. Clinicians, nurses, and pharmacists can also visit exchangecme.com for free access to CME in a variety of therapeutic areas. Thanks again. We'll see you on the next episode of Monday Morning Joe.